Franciscan Healthcare. I used to think that my stories of growing up on the east side of Milwaukee were incredibly specific. I've come to learn after telling these stories all over the country that they are incredibly universal. Hi, I'm John McGivern. I was born and raised on these streets on the east side of Milwaukee. And when I tell people from Milwaukee that I'm from the east side, they usually say, oh. And I always say, no. Why? Because I was raised closer to the river than I was to the lake. I was raised on Bartlett Avenue between Kenwood and Hampshire in a duplex, a three bedroom, one bath, living room, dining room, kitchen duplex, where you could reach out the dining room window and touch the dining room window of the house next door, Milwaukee. What other sin in the world could I have grown up in where the Wazalewskis lived across the street from the Jezusheks, who lived around the corner from the Randalls, who lived right next door to the Trilogies, who lived around the corner from the Balistreries, who lived next door to the Doolins, who lived next door to the Sekolinskis, who lived right next door to the McGiverns. It was an Eastern European, German, Polish, Irish, Italian, Jewish neighborhood where in a moment in the summer you could run outside and there'd be 30 kids to play with. I got my butt kicked every 10 minutes. <laughs> Lots of kids in my neighborhood. Milwaukee. What other city in the world could I have grown up in where the men sat on the porch from the end of June to the end of October discussing which car is better? The Ford? Oh, yeah, look at that Ford. Oh, that's a Galaxy 500. That's new. Oh, that's nice. Or the Chevy. Oh, oh, oh it's an Impala. Mm -hmm. That's a sleek car. Oh, when in fact they were all driving Ramblers. <laughs> Milwaukee. What other city in the world could I have grown up in that every Friday you can get what? Fish. Not only fish, but fried fish. Go anywhere. You know where you can go? You can go to the dry cleaner. They're like, would you like a fish fry? No, I'd like my shirts, please. Milwaukee. Milwaukee, what other sin in the world could I have grown up in that has this stuff? It guises itself as soft-served ice cream. It has nothing to do with soft-served ice cream. You know what it is? It's custard. Frozen <laughs> custard. Oh, it's the best. Go somewhere else in the country and ask for frozen custard. You know what they think you're going to get? Pudding in the freezer. Now, I have a friend. Her name is Kenny. She lives in San Francisco. She came to Milwaukee to play at the Paps because she's a singer-songwriter. Kenny, she eats a lot of bark. She wears Birkenstocks and she doesn't shave. Presume what you will. She flew into Milwaukee and I picked her up at the airport. And instead of taking her to a hotel, I took her to 27th and Oklahoma to Leon's Custard because I thought she needs to experience this thing that we all know. We got to the counter and I said, I'd like a single scoop of vanilla for myself because I'm a purist. And I'd like a single scoop of vanilla from my friend because she's a presume what you will. Kenny took that first bite, her first bite ever of frozen custard. And I looked at her and I said, Kenny, you look pretty. And she said, oh, this is good. This is rich. What is this? Frozen butter? But welcome to Milwaukee. The only city in the world that has this word, this word that we all use as part of the population of this city. Go somewhere else in the country and ask where this word is. Ask where this is and they think you're an idiot. Go somewhere else. Go to Idaho and, and ask, where is the bubbler? And they're like, huh, where are you from, Milwaukee? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What other city in the world could I have grown up in where there's a church on every other corner? And on the corners in between, there's a tavern. A tavern. That's what we call our bars in Milwaukee. Tavern. Go somewhere else in the country and say the word tavern. See what people do. This is what they do. They're like, hmm? And I always say, you don't know what a tavern is? Go home. Grab your Webster's Dictionary. Look up the word tavern. Do you know what it says? It says, see Milwaukee. And all of these taverns had the same name, on draft. Pabst, on draft. Schlitz, on draft. Oh, Blatz, on draft. Hams, on draft. When I was six years old, I could sing. I'm from I'm Milwaukee, from and, Milwaukee I and I ought to know. know. It's draft brew, Blatz, Blatz beer, Blatz wherever beer, you wherever go. You know. Cakes, cans, or bottles, we all agree. Blatz is Milwaukee's favorite three. Which is truly pathetic for a six-year-old. Milwaukee.
Filling, that's clear. That's his Milwaukee's finest beer. As I said, my first name is John. My last name is McGivern. That's M-C, capital G, I-V-E-R-N. My mother's maiden name is O'Fahey. That's O, apostrophe, capital F-A-H-E-Y. You're presuming that I'm Irish. You're right. And in knowing that I'm Irish, I'm sure you're presuming that I was raised Catholic. Yeah. Right again. I'm the third born of six kids to Bill McGivern and Joan O'Fahey. Bill and Joan, two kids at the age of 20, found each other and raised their kids in a duplex on the east side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Third born of six, and my parents were so incredibly clever when they named their six Irish Catholic kids. I have a brother, his name is Jim. I have another brother, his name is Tim. I have one more brother, his name is Mike. My name is John. We have Bill, Joan, Jim, Tim, Mike, and John. By a syllable. I have two Irish Catholic sisters, Colleen Mary Margaret and Maureen Mary Margaret. So clever, so Irish, so Catholic, so East Side. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I was raised in this duplex on the east side of Milwaukee, a duplex that my father owned. He always rented the upstairs to UWM students. That's right, UWM students. And he only rented to boys because my father always said, boys are easier to manage. Okay, you need to understand that my father had six kids, four boys and two girls. He never raised his voice nor his hand to his girls, but boy, could he manage his sons. He meet these boys who rented his upstairs flat three weeks after they began their rental, and he'd say to them, hey, hey, you boys, you were late last night. And they'd look at him like, huh? And he'd say, you live under my roof, you live under my rules. I'd be standing behind him as a kid wanting to yell, how do you think we feel? You have a lease. We have a life. <laughs> My dad's duplex. My dad was a bricklayer. He was a bricklaying welder, a union mason. And in 1968, my father and his bricklaying buddies did something that had never been done on Bartlett Avenue before. They finished our basement. A finished basement. The first thing those bricklayers did, they built a six foot bar out of brick. So we had our own tavern in the basement. After they finished that project, they built a breakfast nook out of brick. Then they built a TV stand where they put the TV and the stereo out of brick. Then they built a school desk out of brick. If you had been in our basement in 1968, you would have looked around and said, is this a grotto? So to celebrate the completion of our new finished basement, my parents had a New Year's Eve party, that New Year's Eve of 68 going into 69, and it was an adults only party. They invited all the neighborhood people, the Wazalewskis and the Sekolinskis and the Randalls and the Jezusheks and the Doolins, and all the men wore coat and ties and the women wore cocktail dresses and hose and high heels and pearls to come to our basement. And it was for adults only. And I remember as a kid thinking, I really want to go down to the basement. And all the people would have to come up the basement steps and come to our bathroom, the only bathroom on the first floor. And I remember the first woman we came up was Mrs. Jezusik. And she came up, and as she passed, I saw that she had ripped nylons. And I thought, what are they doing down in that basement? A few moments later, Mrs. Sekolinski came up and she had a big cut on her forehead and I thought, oh my Lord, what are they doing in that basement? A couple more women came up and they had ripped nylons and when my mom came up, I said to my mom, Mom, what's going on in the basement? Everybody has ripped nylons and Mrs. Sekolinski needs stitches. And my mom said, bricks aren't safe. My dad was a bricklayer and we had a finished basement. Okay.